We have a group of staff from the digital office here today, and they're going to introduce themselves in a moment. First of all, I'd like to welcome you, and I would also like to say that the session is going to end with a Q&A. Hopefully, we will have enough time for it, but there's a Q&A session, so if you have any questions for the digital office team, please feel free to type them in in the questions box that you find on your right-hand side of your, the panel on your screen. Um, if you have any technical problems, you can post them there as well. Hopefully, we will have time for all the questions. If we don't, then they will be answered on the Knowledge Hub. So you will be told about the Knowledge Hub and the Digital Office Knowledge Hub group at a later time. So you are welcome to join there. Um, but yes, I'm going to hand over to Martin, who is the first speaker from the Digital Office. Well, thanks. thanks, Christopher. Well, just wanted to say this session is being recorded, so we're also going to share it on the Knowledge Hub afterwards. Sorry about that, Martin. That's Christopher. I was full flow there, getting ready for this. With a, a, no, I can't see the audience, so hopefully you can hear my voice. Okay. Um, so welcome to the first webinar from the uh, Digital Office for Scottish Local Government. My name is Martin Wallace, Chief Digital Officer, and I'll introduce the team who are sitting beside me in a very, very warm room in Livingston at the moment. Um, without further ado, as Christopher said, if you have any questions, please go to the right of the screen and enter them there. We'll answer them at the end. So if anything pops up, just add it in as we talk through the slides and we'll be happy to answer them. Um, if we can't answer them today, we'll be on the K-Hub as well. So without further ado, I thought because some of you have not met us before, we thought we'd go through the digital office, where we've been an update so far and what our, our vision and strategy is um, for the future for local government. So I'll introduce you to the team. Um, I know we all look a bit brick-like here, um, but we want to build the success for digital transformation in Scotland. I think that's the only bad joke <laughs> I'll do today, if that's okay. So without further ado, I'll introduce to... Jackie. Gordon. And Malcolm. And sorry, but Colin Butchnell can't be here today because he's stuck in, in Glasgow City Council. Um, but he did want to, if there's any messages for him or questions for him, please feel free to put them in there. Um, I think because he's not here, we'll give him all the actions as well. The, 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 the common office yeah. thing, isn't it, guys? Yeah. Cool. Okay. So um, as um, as they've just introduced themselves, where they fit in, we are a very, very small team. If you look at Gartner or Deloitte's about digital disruption, the normal size of a digital team is between two to 20 people. In a previous role, I had 18 people um, who created a £50 million business in 12 months. Now, I'm not trying to sell local government here. Uh, what we're trying to do is disrupt, is trying to challenge and look at how we can accelerate at speed um, to get the results we wish. If we look at digital transformation as a city or a large destination point, the role of our office is to create the tracks to get to that destination point. And councils are all in different parts of this journey. They might be in stations of GDPR, they might be in stations of um, cloud, they might be in stations of security. It's about getting people to lead at the front of the train and the other councils to sit in behind them as carriages, helping us get to that final destination together. And the whole point of the digital office is about collaboration. So we've got 30 partner councils across Scotland. And we've also got partnerships such as the Improvement Service, who thanks today for hosting us here. Uh, we've got Scottish Government, NHS, um, Scotland Excel and CMIS. So we are linked in at a collaborative approach around digital strategies. And the role of the office is there to pool resource, be a project oversight, but also create virtual teams in common interests, which we'll cover in a second or two. So the Scottish Local Government Digital Partnership. As I said, it's been agreed by SOLAS. We have 30 councils at the moment. Um, and I've mentioned Scottish Government, Scotland Excel, NHS and COSLA. But we're there to basically strategize and pull the stuff together um, to therefore get to this digital transformation journey. So the purpose of the partnership was to realize economies of scale, develop national consistent and common approaches, new culture, um, and still and reuse and share and work collaboratively. There's a lot of great innovation out there, but maybe due to budget, due to marketing, through to comms, we've maybe not shouted about it enough. So the purpose of us here is to accelerate that, find the golden nuggets, find the best principles we can use and reuse them rather than reinvent the wheel. I think the typical approach is we do something once and do it 30, then roll it out 32 times, rather than do it 32 times and do it once. At the end of the day, we don't have money, we don't have the time, and we certainly have big, big challenges ahead, such as Brexit, aging population, and that pressure for us to deliver frontline services as we continue on this, this journey toward transformation. 
if we look at where the digital office sits in, you know, we saw this have, have uh, put us together, but we're there to collaborate. You know, we have soccer team, we have a partnership exchange, we have a stakeholder exchange, but it's pulling the resource together in one coherent manner so we can actually do this all together. I can't re-emphasise this amount, it's about a collaboration. And if we saw from the, the, the start and the people in the room, there is actually only five of us in this office. Yes, we're going to recruit a comms person. Yes, we're going to recruit a chief information security officer. But that's it. We don't have the time, all of us, unfortunately, to do all the projects. So that's why we come back to you guys that are out there to help work with us. Again, any questions on that, please put them up just now. We want to be engaging with you. And if we're not engaging, tell us how we can do because um, it is all about coming together and doing this together for the for the greater good. So in terms of leadership, my Twitter handle's there, um, but you can also follow more updates at, at Digital Office LG or go to digitaloffice.scot website. And of course, there's the K-Hub, um, which we set up two weeks ago, and we're, we're quite astounded by the take-up, aren't we, Jackie? There's yeah, been quite, great. Quite, quite, quite a lot of people out there wanting to get involved, and that's fantastic. So just tell your colleagues about it, make sure they're aware of it, and get involved in the discussions. There might be some stuff there that might be a bit controversial. Feel free to comment. We're happy to be challenged ourselves because we don't have all the answers. You guys do. You are the experts. We are just the digital office. We know how to do things digitally, hopefully, and, <laughs> and challenge the norms with digital solutions. But at the end of the day, this is you guys. This is where you come in and you can help us do this together with us. So the journey so far. So we follow GDS, the Government Digital Service, quite closely, and they have an um, agile methodology, but they also have a program life cycle of discovery, alpha, beta, and live. So we at the office, when we first set up in October last year, took that same program life cycle to get to where we are today. So in the discovery phase last year, uh, from October to January, myself and Colin, there was only two of us in here, Colin, the Chief Technical Officer, myself, and um, went out and engaged with senior management teams with 30 councils around Scotland. We defined the governance. We re, you know, baselined the strategy, which I'll take you through in a minute. We looked at establishing programs, defining prioritized projects, a whole lot of stuff in three months. And essentially, when we first started, there were six key things that our board came to us and said, this is what you should maybe look at to begin with. By Christmas, we had 50 things for transformation. Now, when we went back to the board and said, what's the priority? Funnily enough, they went, all of them. So what we tried to do was then pull them into 18 key programs of work, which we'll cover in a minute or two. So as of April, you know, we had a lot of time to go around. Well, not a lot of time, but we had a lot of mileage to do. And that gives us a sense of the proportion of, of what we did. So there was eight flights for myself and um, just about 7,000 miles in the car. That has increased as I've continued that journey around the whole of Scotland to come out and see you face to face. And yes, there is digital means such as Skype for Business or Google Hangouts. But yes, I also know the challenges that we have in terms of IT infrastructure not being as good as we hope it is in some instances and obviously the security around about it. So don't worry, we are addressing that with some of the programs. So the strategy update so far, we looked at three key themes for the strategy to make it simple. So we start with digital leadership. So leadership is very, very key in terms of digital transformation. It's looking at embracing new ways of working, looking at the skills gap, the culture, and the innovation that's required to accelerate digital transformation within an organization. Digital services will touch on in a minute, but digital foundation is the platform. It's all about the technical stuff. It's about how we can achieve better value from technology, how we can get data to talk to each other, how we can myth bust around things like GDPR, data protection, PSN compliance, security, and just have one coherent view to move forward together on this. It's also making sure that the foundation, we have the capacity to deliver our digital services and realize the savings out of them. And then last but not least, the third one, digital services itself. So looking at how we can have easier customer interactions uh, with the council. If we go back to Christie principle, it was about building services around the individual. Where I see this now is more about demand and supply. So the citizen demands more from us as a public sector. How do we facilitate that through digital methods? We might not necessarily want to contact the council Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, because we're busy working ourselves as citizens. So how can we interact with them 24, 7, 365 in a digital manner, which means that we can reduce cost to serve, but also deliver the same outcomes that we wish for the individuals as well. In terms of governance structure, we had to set up governance end of the day. We are a risk averse culture, and I totally understand that, but also we need to collaborate to move forward. So we set up kind of four 
um, key boards, including the audit committee, and we created the Partnership Forum. So the Partnership Forum, we had our first in April uh, this year. We invited all the partner councils to participate, which was the Digital Transformation Manager or the Director in charge of Digital Transformation within the council. We had 80 people um, said they were going to come along, and on the day we had 78 people show up. Now that's fantastic. That's the best ever event I've ever had in my life through my career. But this gave the people the opportunity to then review what we were doing as a digital office, help us prioritize what were the key programs we need to push forward in the quickest possible time, but also then looked at how councils could then lead on a project, how councils could be collaborators in the project to help with the business case, or in essence, followers or critical friends and that was, in essence, to councils that were requiring certain projects to be kicked off now because they have an immediate need for them, or people who are not quite now but on the horizon, and then people as much later on. The beauty is that once we set these defined standards and these projects, the information is shared within the partnership. So therefore, if you have a program that you're not necessarily doing right now, then somebody else will have already done the work for you. Again, stopping reinventing the wheel, saving cost and saving time, which is basically one of the parts of the vision of the digital office. The exec boards, we meet six times a year. It's between Solace and Socketum. So right up there in terms of agreeing the program plan and um, being able to help the leadership for delivery of the program as well from us. The strategy and performance boards, we had our first strategy and performance board yesterday, um, but that will meet three to four times a year. And you can see from the slides who's actually on there, but it's about amalgamating the different digital strands and digital strategies across the public sector to be able to deliver something coherently for the councils. And then delivery board, which is the more key one now, is about the delivery. It's about getting this thing moving forward, getting the, the programs assigned, getting the projects working, and then helping to, to get the outcomes we wish. So without further ado, as I mentioned, by Christmas, we had 50 items for digital transformation. However, we had to get them into some sort of cohesion. So we created 18 key programs of work. We're gonna come through a few of them in a second or two uh, with some of the guys in the room. But that gives a sense of what we're looking to tackle. Now, again, feel free to question it. Put it up to the right-hand side for questions. If there's something currently missing, let us know. If there's something your council's working on that we should be looking at, let us know. You know, we don't have all the answers, and it's back about this communications piece, hence the fact we're doing the webinar today, to have that one-to-one -one conversation or the one-to-thirty conversation across local government to understand what is your priorities. Tell us if we've missed something out. We need to know so we can then help address it through digital office. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand over to Malcolm, who is uh, going to talk about GDPR readiness. Okay. Hi, I'm Malcolm Cameron. I'm the program manager for the digital office. Um, as you'll seen on that previous slide, there's a lot of projects and I only wanted to go over two or three today and um, just to give you a flavor for them. And um, probably one topic that's on uh, a lot of council's minds at the moment is GDPR readiness. Um, this slide shows that we've got Paul Elliott from Glasgow City Council leading that as programme manager, and thanks to Paul if he's listening. Um, and we've got a team there. There's a lot of papers now being put up on the K-Hub under the folder for F03 GDPR readiness. So that's if you're one of the 30 councils who are in the partnership, you'll get access to that. Um, and that's the area to see the progress today and have a discussion on, on the various bits and pieces that are involved with that. Obviously, as uh, Martin mentioned, we only really want to do it once and have a common approach to it. So I would advise you all, if you're interested in GPR, GDPR, go and have a look at those pages and get involved, post your questions. And also you can see the progress and the timescales, et cetera, for the May um, 2018 deadline where we have to have that implemented. I think just on the part of GDPR, there's a lot of businesses and private sector just now offering the golden bullet or the silver bullet or the, 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 the answer to all your problems. But if you scratch the surface, they don't even understand local government. The beauty of this is we've collaborated with Glasgow City Council and Fife Council to create this on behalf of the partnership. And it's like Malcolm said, it's about risk aversion, doing it once and having one common approach to take that forward. And I'll hand over, oh, back to Malcolm again yep. for a bit of use of data. Um, Again, we've uh, had a look at this one and we've got Peter Tollin from North Lanarkshire who's going to take the, the lead on the better use of data. Um, there's a, a few items there in the, on the screen that I won't read out to you, but that shows you the type of scope and the work that's undertaken there. Again, there's on K-Hub um, the information, there's a bit of discussion beginning to start there on that one. Um, and there's 
there's the lead councils and the partnership councils. So there's a there's a wealth of information we'll be going up there on the better use of data to meet those those targets. And probably the last one I'll talk about today is my husband from East Renfrewshire has uh, agreed to take on the lead for the Common Platforms project. Again, it's uh, it's repetition here. I like to keep things uh, simple. So there's an element there where um, all the, the common um, issues that the councils are going to face will challenge them, will tackle them once, will come out, out with a common approach to it and uh, then that will help with the investment of time that all the councils have to, to put in there. So I'll hand over now back to Martin, I'm getting waved at here, <laughs> um, to, he's got something more to say I think. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to introduce um, Gordon um, from Scotland Excel, um, who actually works for the digital office, but this is all about the collaboration piece uh, as I keep going on and on about. So Scotland Excel are a procurement partner, um, so I, I fund um, I fund Gordon, who works at Scotland Excel, but it's assigned back to myself. So without further ado, Gordon. Hi, um, I'm the newest member of the uh, digital office team. Um, so I'm not quite as far on with this particular project uh, that Malcolm is with hers, his. Um, I anticipate the supply chain and procurement is going to uh, involve partners and suppliers and procurement professionals. So what's anticipated in this, uh, the first piece of this project will be uh, an audit of the existing IT solutions. Uh, there will be a review of uh, potential collaborative um, projects moving forward. There will be uh, a lot of discussion with you guys as partners. I'm going to be discussing with the professionals in Scotland Excel and the Scottish Government how we can support agile development by delivering principles and guidelines for agile procurement, which will all be relatively new. Um, and I guess, uh, ultimately, what we're trying to do here is uh, save money, improve service uh, to, the, to the end user and customer. And one of the, the opportunities that we may have would be to collaborate on the deployment of Office 365. Um, I know there are a number of partner organisations are looking at it. One or two have actually uh, gone a little bit further than that. Um, within Scotland Excel, I'm using it myself. So um, we are in discussion uh, with a number of uh, partners and looking at opportunities to, to, to develop that further. Cool. And I think now hand over um, to Jackie to talk through digital maturity. Yeah, so there's been a lot of interest, which is really good, in the digital maturity model, or some people might know it as a digital readiness survey. Um, so a uh, model was developed by Colin and Glasgow City Council and tested within Glasgow City Council as well. And it was, it was amended and it was found to be really useful there. So we're actually using that model. And I'm now, I've got five councils that are interested and we're going to go ahead and try it out in different ways, different methodologies there um, and see what the, the outcome of that is. So I'll know that there's more than five councils very interested in the digital maturity model. We're also linking in with um, nationally with the Scottish Government and also with NHS who have got maturity models. There's a lot of maturity models out there. So we're making sure that we, we try and get even perhaps go for one sort of overall model, if we could do that, particularly with the NHS side and the fact that we've got health and social care and the IGIP as well. So anyway, there's a lot of stuff happening on that. And what, the, what we would hope to do is once we've tested it in the five councils and once we've decided methodologies that work best and so forth, then we'd be looking to roll that out across all the partner councils that were interested in doing it. And well aware that some councils have already recently done some kind of digital maturity, so we wouldn't be making it compulsory for people to have to replace that. However, it, we do think it will be of, of real value, and we're starting off on the leadership side of digital maturity, so that's going to be the focus. Moving on, the next um, the next one that we're looking at, and we've got a lot of interest in this as well, is digital transformation capabilities. So that sounds quite a grand title, but really we're looking at what I've learned from only being here two months is that actually it's less about the digital and more about changing business processes um, so that we can get ready for the technology. So and in a lot of cases, 
and that involves looking at things quite differently. So we've been having discussions with Scottish Government about their service design champions, which sounds really interesting. And I think that that kind of approach where they're involving user design within their service design would be really useful for a lot of councils out, of, out there. So we're hoping and um, we're going to link in. They're very, very keen to work with us. They're even keen to get a, maybe a Scottish approach to service design. So I think that that would be really um, a real goal for us to achieve. So we're also interested in councils coming forward out there who have are using Agile or maybe using Six Sigma or Lean or any of these techniques and using it well. And we want to hear, hear from you as well. So if you could let us know through the Key Hub um, and if you're willing to, to get involved, that would be fantastic. I think last uh, last slide for the moment um, is around digital health and care. So there is some great opportunities uh, in how we do health and social care in the future. First of all, analog to digital or digital telecare. Um, if you're unaware, the providers for our current telephone systems are going to move over to a digital model starting from next year. So this has a great opportunity to change around the business process and the models we have traditionally had for digital telecare um, in the home, especially when there's so much focus and about being rehabilitated back in the house or the home or the community rather than hospitals. So there's a great work there and we're moving to alpha with that in conjunction with technology enabled care at Scottish Government. Case management review just now, Northgate announced earlier on this year that we're moving out of the SWIFT market. So we've uh, got a cohort being pulled together just now, which I think Inverclyde are going to lead on. Sorry to put you in the spot if you're on from Inverclyde. Um, around a swift replacement, but also just looking at the outcomes for the future. And uh, self-directed care uh, seems to be a big topic just now that was announced last week at the Audit Scotland um, report about self-directed care, which will link into case management review as well. And then the health and social care integration blueprint, we've already got some, some uh, funding um, secured for doing an audit on the back office between health and social care systems to look at how we can do a web-enabled and API approach um, going forward. So, as you can see, there's a lot going on in the digital office just now. Um, the future is certainly digital. And two notes, uh, or two, two dates for your diary. On the 19th of September, uh, we're holding a project manager leads discussion in Stirling. Um, so if you're a project manager on any of these different topics, get in contact through K-Hub, speak to Malcolm, speak to Jackie, and we'll make sure you're, you're included in this event that's happening in Stirling at the new code base site. And if you're a, a head of digital transformation or a digital director in the councils, uh, the next event is the 24th of October for a partnership forum. Again, get in contact with us. We think we already know who you all are. We got a good chance last time. But um, if you've now got digital transformation in your title, let us know. Get involved in the conversations and help us work this together um, going forward. So the beauty is that people from the old have come up with quotes that I could even come up with. Um, so as Socrates says, the secret to change is to focus all of your energy, not in fighting the old, but building on the new and I think that's something we have to do with digital. At the end of the day, we are so used to the power of a smartphone in our hand for our consumer life. How can we bring this into council life? At the end of the day, we are citizens as well as local government staff. So how do we bring this, this whole digital ecosystem to life together? And if you want to follow us, you can say earlier on, you can follow us on Twitter, you can follow us on the website, or you can do the K-Hub site as well. And that for once, I think I will shut up and hand over to Christopher if there's any questions. Well, thank you. Uh, as Martin says, this is now the last five minutes maybe for a, a Q&A session. I've got a couple of questions. Maybe actually you want to the previous slide you had where you, your contact details. It might be the good one to have off while we're doing Q&A. Yep. So um, one of the, we had a couple of questions coming through and I'm, I'm going to start with those and then feel free if you are there to, to use the question pane on the side. So the question, what is the best way to share experience and information with project lead author authorities, project leads? Should we approach them directly or through the digital office? Ideally through the digital office, we have got lead councils there um, and we did have people sign up for the cohort. But if you come through us, we can facilitate that, that integration and make sure we have all the lessons learned all in the one place. Okay, um, and this one is maybe for all of you. How can staff on the ground help the project? Oh, good question. Well, I think I think the K Hub's got power yeah, yeah, um, because yeah. people can post up anything they want there. They can offer if they feel that they've got a particular expertise. Mm -hmm. 
um, they can offer that up. They can link in with the project. Most of the project leads are on yep. K Hub, so um, and we can, if not, we can facilitate that, as you've, you've rightly said. Yeah. Um, so, um, I think that's the best place to to come to is yep. the K Hub site and put up what you think you can help with, and we're, we'd be absolutely delighted if people could. could can do I that. just chip in there as well? The K Hub site is restricted to the thirty partnership councils plus one or two other stakeholders that are involved in the, in the wider frame of the, the project. So although it's a large group of people, it's still a, what's called a closed group. So it's uh, feel free to post your questions or your suggestions up there, because in the main, they'll only be viewed by other council members or, or a few of the stakeholders. So. I think just echoing that, the, the beauty is it's a crowd, it's a family. We're one public sector family or one local government family. So there's no wrong answers or wrong questions. Put the stuff up, collaborate, get involved, question us, challenge us, give us ideas. If you've got time you want to donate you know, some time to us, feel free to do so. We're very, very happy to have you all involved in this. So yeah, get involved in the K-Hub and again, Twitter and also the website as well going forward. And if you want to write blogs for us as well, feel free to let, get us in contact. We're happy to get content for our website. You could be famous uh, through the digital office, so feel free to do that as well. Can I also add <clears throat> that engagement with the work streams is going to be key to this. There'll be a number of requests that will come out from a, a few of the different projects looking for you guys to give us information uh, and feedback. And I think the, the success will only be boosted by the amount of feedback that we get. So I would encourage everybody to, and I know you're all busy, I know you've got hundreds of things to do, but if you can give us a bit of your time, that would certainly be appreciated. There's a, there's a thought there as well. We, at the exec meeting on Monday, and we posted up a table showing all the councils who were either lead or participating or following. So it's maybe worthwhile putting that we'll up. Publish the K Hub, we'll yeah. The we'll do that. So you can see yourself yep. who your own where your own council stands on that, mm -hmm. and we'll probably put the names where we have them, where you can get in touch with them directly yeah. as well. So either yep. the K Hub or if you're in the participating or following or leading, and um, the details should be there for all. I'd like to say I'm not the digital office, but I'm in improvement service. And uh, if you have any problems with using the K-Hub or want to know more about using the Knowledge Hub, yeah. improvement service is leading on, on the Scottish public sector network on the Knowledge Hub, and we're quite happy to help you. We support all councils and all public sector organizations in Scotland, so feel free to contact us. Um, that was just a jumping in because I could piggyback on that. That's fine. Just, I know you're more than welcome to my collaboration. Uh, and, an, and an example, we have a comment, and I'll go to more questions, but yep. a, a comment of something you could share more about on the Knowledge Hub is in Glasgow, we've just implemented 2,700 iPhones with various apps to allow checking in and out of service yep. user homes, shared data with social work, NHS, huge potential for further uh, added digital cap capability you know, to a very large and lone wo workforce. Yep. So that's an example of something you probably would, yep. would like to see discussed more. And Absolutely. It's, it's, it's a best use can that, um, scenario because I was the person back in the day at BlackBerry that sold Blackberries into Cordia for doing that. So it's now been upgraded to iPhones. I'm happy. Well, maybe not, but yeah, it's great. I'm happy. I'm happy. Um, a question we've seen certainly in the geospatial profession, strategies come and go, and often the reason that they fail to deliver is that there is a distinct lack of funds and people willing to take responsibility for tangible actions and real change. What proverbial carrots and sticks do we have to ensure that local government wants to and is forced to change and improve? I think the, the fact is it's budget. The, the whole thing about budgets is, you know, we, we are... At a critical time where we have no money, you know, and we have to, you know, use data from the councils to make big, big decisions. So I think that's one carrot and one stick we can use to, to, to change. I think there's also political pressure for us to do more with less. Uh, and we cannot decimate the frontline staff any longer. So we have to streamline the processes to give the frontline staff the right information at the right time in the right place in the right format to do the jobs more effectively and be more productive. So I think that there's various carrots and sticks we can use politically as well as business process wise to get the savings we wish to do that going forward. Another question, are previous improvement service projects being aligned, for example, a reference architecture? Yep, so we've got things with Common Platforms, um, which has got stuff that's been done by various councils in the past, but just ex enhancing that. So other things that have been done with other people have not been ignored, they're being in integrated. So things like My Account, things like um, Spatial Hub, uh, and other stuff that Improvement Service are doing, we are, we are aligned to these things going forward. Great. Uh, another question, Will, sorry if I just jumped, is the concept of shared services a real possibility through a transformation? That's a, that's a political hotbed, isn't it? Oh, um, 
it, there's been there's been uh, good shared services. There's been bad shared services. Uh, there is an opportunity, I I reckon, but it's above my pay grade. <laughs> yeah. Is that the right answer? Is that probably the right answer? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and yeah, I'll come back. I'll come back. I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that. Yeah, yeah. We have time for one or two questions more. Machine yep. learning is yep. a definite buzzword at the moment. Yep. Is this going to be explored too? Absolutely. Um, so artificial intelligence has come up, um, but I think we seem to do a lot of buzzwords across private and public sector. So we could apply technology, but at the end of the day, for artificial intelligence, you have to figure out what questions you want answered first. So, for instance, the good example I use is Manchester City Council started a question for AI with, how do we identify more troubled families in our, our area? So they went to housing associations and asked them for data, and they said, look, what do you suggest is when you see a troubled family that you're not quite sure of? And they said, holes in the wall, uh, broken furniture, broken windows, broken doors. So took that data set, went to education and said, what do you see? And they said, kids playing truant, kids, um, you know, difficulty in class, uh, kids with, um, you know, lack of money for school school meals and stuff. So took that data set, went to a &E for, you know, normal things like markings and stuff. Went to, I think it was a, a food bank as well. Put that data together and applied some business intelligence rules for, with AI. And they found over 100 troubled families they hadn't seen in the system before. So if you are looking at AI and machine learning, yes, it's on the horizon, but we need to get the enablers out there first. So we need to look at how we, we look at the data, the common platforms, the cloud myth busting, because we certainly don't have the architecture to do big AI within our councils. I don't think, unless there's somebody prove me wrong, please do so. So it's getting through these things first before we can get those that, that next stage. So that is on the horizon. Um, the we're going to finish now, so so if you have any further questions, uh, please feel free to join the Knowledge Hub and, and ask questions in there. I know the team is keen to see more questions Absolutely. And, and give opportunities to, to incorporate it in their work. Um, there's a, there's a, a comment at the end that you might want to touch on, Martin, and then mm -hmm. after that we're going to finish, so you yep. might want to round up afterwards. And we are going to share this recording, so if you have anything that you missed in the recording, it's going to be on the Knowledge Hub. But, uh, and the last comment is, Martin, the common on local issues and artificial intelligence or AI see uh, place standards and how it can look and um, uh, how it can link to local outcome improvement plans. Yep. Is that something you... Yep, we had a conversation about CPPs and uh, health outcomes in a place. It's a concept that Colin came up with called digital place. So how do we use data to be able to give that information back to communities to actually get better outcomes? So it has been considered as well. So yes, we are looking at that. I'm going to stop here because we promised people that we were only yep. going to take half an hour and now we're taking 32, well, 35 minutes, sorry. Um, I hope that this has been useful and um, the Improvement Service has been really glad to host it. No, thank you, guys. Thank you, Christopher. Thank uh, you. It's been really informative for me as well in my role. So is there any last words you want to? No, just get involved. Please feel free to, to challenge us, question us, put ideas, thoughts up, get in contact with us. At the end of the day, we work for you. At the end of the day, we are the digital office. We work for local government. So please, please, please get in contact with us and help us because um, we cannot do this on our own. It's, again, back to the whole collaboration piece. So thanks, everybody, for your time and, and thanks, Christopher, and Improvement Service for hosting. Thank you. And I'm going to end the webinar, so thank you for attending. <laughs>